This is probably not one of my brighter ideas. I know. Hi guys, it's Leanne and once again I am in a strange possession. Much as you would like me to, I am not going to dance in this video, but I may weep. Welcome to my TBR for June. Or more specifically, picking my TBR for June. You're not going to be involved, but uh, some of his furry friends are. In the true trending tradition of booktube, I have decided to once again torture myself with the random numbers game. Last month, I was just jonesing for a readathon, and I relied on my wonderful podcast partner in crime, Kirsty, to give me some prompts. You see, she had made a prompt list for herself of 30... 30? 31? 30? I however many days were in May. And I let the smartphone of doom torture me with some numbers, some seemingly completely random numbers, although I actually think it was trolling me. But of course, because I am not a reading machine, I did not finish all of those prompts. In fact, some of the prompts that I picked for my TBR, I didn't get to. So for this month, all of those prompts are going back into the pot. That includes the ones that I picked for last month that, that I didn't get and all the new ones that I haven't picked yet. And once again, I'm going to have absolutely no control over which books end up on my reading list for June. I'm already kind of sweating thinking about it. <laughs> because what I've decided to do, I have decided to let my dogs pick my TBR. You wanted to see more of my pets, so... <laughs> this is such a bad idea. <laughs> Hi, take. 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 Hi, take. Take, if this all goes wrong, will you pick new books for me? I'll take that as a no. Hello? Are you all ready to ruin my life? Am I boring you already? <laughs> okay, so how this is going to work. I have a glamorous assistant. This is my lovely wife, Helen, who puts up with all of my weird ideas. Hey, excuse me. That is treats. That's rude. You wait. Here are the other less glamorous assistants. Padfoot. This is Padfoot. This is Munch, the cheeky one. This is Nimbus. Hi, Mr. Nimbus. I like cuddles. He's like, I'm so over this. And this is Mr. Grissom. They look so helpful, don't they? We have a few props for the purposes of this experiment. Yes, we have the all I want is a fuck ton of puppies until I actually have them and then I want to give them back mug, which uh, I will link to below if you want to get for yourself. And in here we have lots and... oh. Apparently no depth perception applies to filming too. We have lots of numbers and these are all of the numbers for the prompts that Kirsty created. They are all written on these and they are all folded over but I will not be picking them. So even if I could see the number, you're in charge. That's an old thing. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a strange feeling? Yes. <laughs> and then we have an assortment of tasty and uh, doggy safe treats. So for the record, in here we have got some cut up apple, there is fresh pear, there is some cabbage, there are some sugar snap peas, there's some carrot, there's a couple of raspberries and I think that's pretty much it. Now, we have had dogs for a long time. We know what is safe for our dogs to eat. If you are unsure at all, please, please do some Googling to double check before you feed them anything. And whatever you do, please don't give them grapes or raisins or sultanas or chocolate because they are deadly. All of these fruits and veg are safe and do not upset our dog's stomachs. However, your dog might be different. So this is by no means any kind of feeding advice. Do your research, people. Because they rely on us to know, don't you? Yes. Okay, so the way that the find it game is going to work, we won't say the magic words until it's time, is that my lovely assistant here is going to pick out four prompts for each dog. There will be two rounds. We will hide the prompts under the assorted treats around the living room area and the first 
one from each dog is the number that will go through to be on my TBR. Do you have any questions? Back in a minute. <laughs> okay, are we... Excuse me? You can't play find it. <laughs> are we ready? Yeah. The selection begins. Where are they going to be hidden? First one's down here. Okay. Yeah. And we'll do another one here. Okay. And we'll do mm, one there. Oh, is that for you, Tyke? <laughs> you won't like it. <laughs> and one there. Okay. Find it, Nimbus. Find it. Find it. Oh, we've Good got a boy. number. Did you eat the number? You're not meant to eat the number. <laughs> oh, oh, son. <laughs> okay, we'll go with the next one. That number is no longer in the game. I'll take the number. You can have that. Get it. Find it, son. He's like, no, you did. You you ruined that one. Where is it? Find it. Nope, it's not up there. I can smell food. D understandably, but it's still not there. Will I give you a hint? <whistles> Yay! Well done. <laughs> he figured it out that time. He picked up the paper and then spat it out. Good boy, Nimbus. Okay, so we're only taking the first number that each dog picks and the rest are out of the running. So what did the first doggy pick? The one that hasn't been digested is number eight. <laughs> so we're not having 25 or 24, or whatever is currently in his upper intestines. I'll give away a raspberry, I suppose. Oh, so salty. Oh, I like the raspberry. So do I. I like all of the things in there, but so we have to share. So we're going to do it in the share. same places. And explain why we're going to do that, Dog Whisper. Uh, so because that's where the extra smells are now. So, otherwise everywhere smells like it. So we want this to, to be particular places that smell like treats. Okay, because otherwise it causes... Confusion! Confusion! Tyke would like to leave. Okay. Tyke would not like to take part and find it. No find it. Selection of the next pupper after the cat leaves. <laughs> Grissom! Find it, Grissom! Find it, Grissom! Where are you going? Where are you going to find it? Oh, Grissom! Oh, that's my boob. Oi! Well done! Same place! Find it! Oh, clever boy! Don't eat the paper! Thank you! Oh, well done! <laughs> Is that gross? I'm terribly sorry. No. assistant who empties the random pick fuck ton of puppy's mug and fills it with tea.
Okay, and now for the results of the torture, I mean the choosing experiment of randomness. What is the first number Glamour's assistant? 11. <laughs> okay, so that's a good pick because it is the final book in a series. So that came up on my last month's TBR. And for that, I have chosen The Empty Grave, which is the... <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> I'll cover your face if I have to. Oh. The last book in the Lockwood & Co series. So in May, I was supposed to read the last three books in the series because Kirsty's list and my smartphone shafted to me. And I didn't get to all three of them. I only got to the Hollow Boy. So technically, I now have The Creeping Shadow, which is book four, <laughs> and book five, which is I'm Gonna Fire You, <laughs> which is the... <laughs> The Empty Grave. What is the next random number, Glamorous Assistant? 27. 20, oh, 27. Oh, okay, so 27 is an indie book, and for this one I have picked an unseen attraction. I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> this is actually a romance novel. It's one that I know very little about, except that it is historical fiction. I think, I think, think set in the late 1800s and it is a male male romance. The wonderful Kirsty picked this book several months ago for me to purchase and I have never got to it so she can now shame me into reading it. All right glamorous assistant number three. Twenty. Twenty. Oh yay! So number 20 is a book with an animal on the cover uh -huh. and for that not tall enough I have picked the Fifth Elephant by Terry Pratchett. So, I have been doing a reread of Terry Pratchett's Discworld series and I have finished The Witches and I'm halfway through the Death Books but I'm also halfway through the Guard series. I paused because the narrators on the audiobook changed and nope. So now I'm going to be finishing the rest of the series in physical format and if she's lucky, Helen might get this one read aloud to her for Excellent. this month. I don't think we've ever read a Terry Pratchett no. book cover to cover. I think we, we maybe started a couple. Terry Pratchett's quite difficult to read aloud unless you can do really, really, really dry and really sarcastic at the same time whilst also being totally sincere. Okay, we're okay up to the sincere bit. And the next one? 28. 28. Mm, they're all coming really late. Uh, Sad face. No, guilty face. Oh, why guilty face? Because, let's see if I can find it without moving. Oh, air misses. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 28 is a book with over 450 pages. I have many things that I could have chosen for this. But I have chosen Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. Any idea why I'm guilty about this one? Because you love Karen Slaughter, so why haven't you read it already? It's been on my TBR like four times in the last year or so, and for some reason it always seems to come really low in my stack, and so if I don't get to it, I don't get to it, and I've never picked it up again. Now you can. Now I'm going to have to, because otherwise, these people will shame me. These lovely people. Lovely, lovely people. And the next number, Glamorous Assistant. 17. This is an unpaid position, you know. What? There's no compensation. Ooh, a book translated into English. I am very, very excited for this one. For this one, I have picked A Nearly Normal Family by, I can never remember his name, M.T. Edverson. Stop looking at the dog. Sorry, I'm trying to eat this. I had to stop him. <laughs> this one is a Swedish thriller, maybe, crime. I don't think it includes a traditional detective, so I wouldn't normally call that crime. But, question mark, many dead bodies. Dead bodies are always good. <laughs> yes, you ought to read a lot about dead bodies. In my fiction, they are always good. Can you stop? Oh. <laughs> Are you full and sleepy? Do you want to cuddle up with people? Yeah. 
Oh, baby. We are surrounded by dogs again. This is our whole life. <laughs> it is. Our whole life. This one is about a mother, a father and a daughter. The father in this case believes that the daughter was framed. The mother in this case believes that the daughter did it. Whoa. The daughter in this case wonders exactly how far her parents will really go if they love her to protect her. Oh, interesting. I want to read it right now. What's for dinner tonight? Risotto. Okay, on to the next number before she starts asking for actual payment for this video. Number eight. Number eight. Ooh, a little number. Back to the start. Ooh, a middle grade book. I'm so excited for this one. It's actually a really good thing that you're here for this one. Have no, no, no. Because you gave me it as a present. Oh, cool. Oh, they're clever. What did I give you? <laughs> Ooh. Oh. 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 Dog farts. Oh. Oh, what a leaf. <laughs> this one is... <laughs> is the Glass Town Game by Catherine M. Valenti. So this is a kind of an interesting one because it's a fantasy but it's based on loose reality. It is actually about the Bronte children as in Charlotte, Emily, Anne and their brother who I think is called Branwell. Check me out. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I totally studied English literature. And in their quite depressing and dark, dank lives, they play a game called the Glass Town Game of where they all make up fictional characters in a completely fictional world to escape from their horrible reality, especially as two of the sisters are being sent away to a pretty dangerous boarding school. In the Glass Town Game, their toy soldiers fight Napoleon. Oh, okay. So I like that it's very much rooted in what was actually going on at the time. Well, I mean, regiments are in Jane Austen's books, but mostly just as fuckboys. Exactly. One day, the Glass Town game comes to life, and the kids realise that there really is no way to escape. But this Glass Town is not exactly the one that they came up with, because some of the things around their house and their other toys have come to life and have joined in the game and everybody has their own agenda. So we only have two more to go because this time, as I said, we've only picked eight. 30. Number 30 is a book with lightning on the cover and this is another one that I didn't get to last month. This is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. And it is the first book in an urban fantasy series it's set in a post-apocalyptic world wherein the main character whose name has slipped my mind is a skinwalker, I think. She has Native American magic and she is pretty much the only thing that can stand between a lost child and the monsters that exist in this post-apocalyptic world. Ah. Mm -hmm. And I have decided to pick this one up on audiobook because the audiobook narrator is great. She made the introduction just so moody and atmospheric and so I was like, I'ma have that. So you can read it after me. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go for you that. You can steal that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Helen is an urban fantasy fan. Yes. And what is the last number? Da -da 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 -da. 22. 22. Ooh, is a book set at a school. I'm going to reach over your head. <sighs> this is The Burning by Laura Bates. I hauled this really recently, maybe in my last haul, I think. This one is a YA thriller slash mystery slash social commentary about a girl who has moved to a brand new school. She has no social media whatsoever. She's deleted everything, will not tell anybody why. And it turns out that in her previous school, she sent, uh, I'm not sure if it's an entirely naked selfie, but a, a selfie showing intimate parts of herself to a boy that she was involved with. And he subsequently sent it to the entire school. <sighs> Several people on Booktube have read it and have loved it. So, cross fingers. Okay, so that is my entire TBR for June. It actually wasn't as bad. I think the boys troll me less than my phone trolls me. Well, it's Bianca, so come on. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get problems with her. What is a book that you are planning to read next month? 
Oh, see, you put them on the spot. How am I meant to know? Uh, Kilman Creek, which is the second, the one after Still House Lake. <laughs> the second book in the Still House Lake series by Rachel Kane. This is a thriller series where a woman and her two children are put into a witness protection program after it is proved that their father, her husband, a stand-up member of the community, is actually a pretty prolific serial killer. Uh, the events of Stillhouse Lake had both of us hanging by our fingernails. It was amazing, it is so good. Why can all thriller books not be that good? And I'm currently listening to Kelman Creek and it's amazing. So yes, that's everything from both of us. Thank you for being my glamorous assistant Yo, once again. The internet was, you were in very high demand. I was, but I'm going to be circumceded. Is that the right word? By the dogs now. Superseded. Superseded? That one. That's what parrots like, isn't it? <laughs> I want a parrot. No. I can get a snake though. So that is everything. As always, if you have read any of the books that I've mentioned here today, or if you are looking forward to picking up any of them after I have showed you them, then please tell me all about it in the comments below. What do I say next? Um, before that. What do we like on this channel? Um, um, opinions. Opinions. Yes. yes. Oh, so, memory. Yes. <laughs> I like memory. If you have disliked any of the books that I've mentioned here today, please also remember to tell me about that in the comments because opinions live here. That is all from me and from my lovely wife Helen and we will see you soon guys. Bye! Bye! Yay!